Hey, Sizio, how are you going? I'm not bad, how are you? Really nice day, isn't it? Good day to get outside. You know what, it's a really lovely day. I'm, I'm really enjoying the weather. Weather is beautiful. We have a pretty mild winter here, isn't it? It, it, know, is, quite, yeah, it is quite warm. Yeah, quite, quite nice. a nice climate, you could say. It is a nice climate. Would you call it like a, it's a temperate climate? I would say it is a temperate climate. How could we graph that? How can we show is climate? There, is there a way to graph climate? I think it's time we introduce the GS Squad to the skill of climate graphs. Climate graphs? Tell me yeah. more. So, climate graphs are a great way of combining both temperature and precipitation. Two skills in one graph. So, both of those things, then you can put them on the same yeah. graph. It's incredible. That's great amazing. way to show the climate of an area. Mm. So, we'll go to the classroom and we'll show you how you can make a climate graph. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, so now we're back inside and we have a climate graph. So, what is a climate graph? A climate graph is a graph that shows the climate. I know. So what are the two most important things about a climate? The temperature and the precipitation. How much it rains or snows or whatever. So up the top, first thing, well actually, tell you what. First thing, on the left hand side, we have rainfall in millimeters. On the right hand side, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. On the bottom, we have our months of the year. They're our three most important points. The first thing to notice, it isn't always like this. Sometimes the rainfall is over here and the temperature is over here. It usually is temperature right, rainfall left, but just make sure you double check just in case. Now, each month you will have essentially an indication of what the average temperature is. That's the average maximum daily temperature for that month and the total monthly rainfall at the bottom. Uh, you will also have at the very top of the graph uh, an indication of where in the world this climate graph is from because all around the world will have a different climate graph, especially with different climates. So you can see here, for example, in Sydney, the rainiest time of year is between March to June there. Uh, we're getting just a bit over 120 millimeters a month. And at the same time, we have in January, we have an average temperature here of about 22, 23 degrees, dropping down in July to about an average of about 13 degrees. Um, this is this type of climate graph, very indicative of a temperate area. Um, we have not no real wet season or dry season, and we have a quite a big temperature range that is the difference between the hottest month and the coldest month. So if we were to go to a tropical area, like uh, Manaus in Brazil, I think that's how you say, middle of the Amazon rainforest here, now you see this is totally different. Again, rainfall on the left, temperature on the right, you'll see two big differences here. The first is half of the year is getting heaps of rain, right? Our January, February, March, April, and December as well, six months of the year, lots and lots of rain. We're up towards 300 millimeters a, a month here. Uh, the temperature, however, you'll remember in Sydney how it dropped down into the middle of the year when they had winter. There is no real winter you know, in, a in a tropical area, so the temperature stays almost uniform. This is why tropical areas don't have winter, summer, spring, autumn. They just have wet season or dry season. That's basically how you read a climate graph. So let's have a look exactly how they used the skill wise. Thanks, Sizio. So we're going to show you now how to actually make a climate graph, which you can get asked to do. And what we're going to do first is look at our precipitation. So we've got a table up here and you can see down the bottom, we've got our precipitation in millimetres for January through to December. So when we do this, we always do blue and we make a bar graph. So we're going to start down here with January. And as you can see in January, they get 120 millimetres average precipitation. And precipitation for this graph, opposite to the last, is actually on the right hand side. So we're going to create a bar graph. 120 is just here. So we're going to create a bar graph that fills in that section in blue. And now I'm just going to keep going and do the rest of the months. Okay guys, so now we've got our bar graph down the bottom. The next thing we need to do is look at temperature. So for temperature, we always use red. And I'm just going to change here to a pen. So we use red and we look at the top part here of the chart, change to red. Um, so for this one, we need to make a line graph. So I'm going to show you first of all for January. January was 28 degrees as the max temperature. So if we come over to the left hand side this time, temperature degrees Celsius, we need to find 28, which is this one here. And really, really important when you draw this dot, you always draw it in the middle of the square. So I always start by just drawing in all my dots, 28, 24, 20, for example, and then I actually connect them up into a line graph. So I'll go through and I'll show you how to do the rest of it.
One last thing always to make sure of is that we actually connect this line all the way to the edge on both sides of our climate graph. Once you've done that, you've got a climate graph showing temperature with our red line graph and showing precipitation with our blue bar graph. All done. We're going to look at what kind of questions very quickly you might get asked in either a test or even in the HSC. So the first is very easy to start. You might just get asked, what is the average, what, what is the, the temperature for a particular month or the rainfall for a particular month? So for example, if we're April here um, and someone asks what the rainfall is, we go up to April, we go across, and we can see there's 120, 140. So it's about 125 millimetres of rain in April there. You might get asked the temperature also. So stick with April, April is there. So if, if you were doing it on your sheet, on your broadsheet, you'd get your ruler and draw a line straight across. Obviously I'm not ruling that, but as good as I can do freehand. Uh, and we can see we're about 18 degrees on average there in, in April. So that's the pretty easy one. Secondly, you might get asked about a season. Uh, largely, you might get asked what is what season is either the has the highest rainfall or the lowest rainfall. It's pretty easy to do, but there's a little trick and it messes some people up. So we can see here that we've got, uh, let's see, December, January, February, summer. So obviously autumn here. Autumn, uh, uh, March, April, May. This bit here is pretty much obviously, you can just sort of eyeball that and it's obviously the, the, the month with the, or the season with the most rainfall. However, here's the trick. And this tripped up a very, very, very good student in the HSC a few years ago, and you know who you are. This month is autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. If this climate graph was from a place in the Northern Hemisphere, that month wouldn't be autumn, it would be spring, right? So you have to make sure you know which hemisphere you're in if you get asked a season question, very important. Um, all right, next thing you might get asked is the temperature range. Temperature range is pretty straightforward. All it is, is the difference between the coldest month, which we can see here is July, and the warmest month, which we can see here is January. And January and February are both the same. So January and February, if we go straight across again, we can see it's about 20, 22 degrees. And our coldest month here in July is 12 degrees. Okay, so we have 22 degrees hottest, 12 degrees coldest, the difference therefore is 10. Sydney has a temperature range of 10 degrees, which is actually pretty big. All right, uh, next thing, you might just get asked for totals, which is a simple addition. So you might get asked, what is the total rainfall for the year? It's a little bit tedious, but then you just have to add up the total rainfalls of each of the, of the months of the year. A little bit time consuming to do, but easy enough. Again, you might get asked just what is the uh, total rainfall for a particular season. And again, just make sure you're in the right hemisphere. Don't assume that December, January, February is summer because if it was a Northern Hemisphere graph, it would be winter. All right, uh, next thing, a little bit tricky. You might get asked which three month period has the most rainfall, right? Now, you can look at that and probably the biggest three month period would be, you know, you'd have to add them up. But again, I think that month, but have a look at your multiple choice options because that three month period might not actually be one of your multiple choices. And the question is actually asking you, given your four multiple choice options, which one of those four has the most rainfall? So don't fall into that trap either. Lastly, interpretation. So you might just get asked to look at the broad, uh, look at your climate graph in general and make some assumptions about what kind of biome or what kind of environment that this graph is likely to show. We talked about how Sydney is a very temperate area uh, and temperate areas will have pretty stable rainfall across the year with a large temperature range. Um, as I showed you before, a tropical area will have a very big rainfall range, have a wet season and a dry season and a very stable temperature. Um, so you can assume that this would probably be like a tropical rainforest or something like that. But you could also assume that a desert, what would a desert be like? Well, it would probably have a quite high temperature, um, maybe a bit of a temperature range, but the precipitation would be way down here the whole year through. So you look at the, the, the rainfall and the temperature combined and you can kind of get a feel for what kind of biome is actually being represented by that climate graph. Well, thanks so much, Samantha. That was so informative and interesting. Isn't it amazing you can fit so much information about a place on one graph? I'm just blown away that you can put temperature and precipitation on the same graph and it still works. I know, you really get a feel for what the climate's like. Mm. Like, I felt like I was in Brazil. Mm, slightly less fires, though. Yeah.
Yeah, but the climate was all there. Yeah, yeah, true. So make sure you join us next week, guys. We'll have another skill coming your way. Check us out on Instagram mm. at Geography Explained Online. I saved a dog. You can check it out there. You can check it all out. Mm. Um, also, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Enjoy the climate. Episode, episode 11. Episode 11. You have not made the bloopers. I'm sad now. You haven't, I... you haven't made a single mistake. Uh, what do you mean by temperate winter. climate? What? <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, I thought we were going to go, what's that mean? And you were going to go. I can subscribe to our YouTube. See you later next, see you later next week. What? <laughs> Look forward to it. All right, let's keep going. Okay. Yes. Oh, Are you going to walk with me or? No, no. <laughs>